This video is going to look for a strategy for multiplying fractions. As always, at the top we need to put the date and topic. The topic of the video is multiplying fractions algorithm. We also need our essential question for the video, which is what rule can we use to create to multiply fractions? We have already learned a model, a visual model, that we can use to represent multiplying fractions. This model is known as the area model, although I, saw, I often call it the brownie pan model. Because visually, it looks like we're cutting up pieces of brownie in a pan. This is a great strategy to use to multiply fractions, but it's also good to have a strategy that doesn't include models. We want to think of a rule or strategy, or what we call math, an algorithm. An algorithm is just an official term that really just means a rule. So it's a rule or a strategy that's used and can be used consistently or repetitively to solve a problem. So we want to see if we can use our models to create an algorithm. The best algorithms are the ones that we discover by analyzing patterns. As we work towards our algorithm, let's go ahead and use the brownie pan model one more time to multiply. Let's find what two-fifths of one-fourth means. And of course that of is an indication that we are multiplying. So it's two-fifths times one-fourth. Let's draw a quick sketch. First, using one color, I'm going to break this down. And I'll start with the part that I'm looking at breaking up. I want two-fifths of one-fourth. So I'm starting with the one-fourth. I'll cut this horizontally first into fourths. My numerator, of course, indicates that one of those fourths needs to be filled in because we have one fourth. Then I want two fifths of that, so I'm going to break this into fifths in the other direction. And my numerator here is a two, so I'm going to go ahead and shade in two of those. Now remember what we're looking for in the brownie pan model, and that is where the shading overlaps. In this case, that's right here, right? So there are two squares that are shaded in, and if I count up all the squares, this is a four by five rectangle, I can count up and know that there were 20 pieces all together. So it's the fraction two twentieths, or some of you might be thinking one tenth. As you look at this original number sentence, two fifths of one fourth equals two twentieths, just ask yourself if you notice anything while you look at those numbers. Now go ahead and write down these three number sentences. These are complete and I've already provided you with the product, the answer to the multiplication problem. Looking at these, I notice right away that they all have something in common. Take a moment to see what you notice. Go ahead and write it is, whatever that is, whatever you notice, kind of over here on the side of your page. Fill in the sentence that I started for you. I notice that blank, with anything that you observe by looking at the numbers, in this list. Once you've written something down, let's go ahead and unpause the video and we'll compare what we wrote. I also wrote what I noticed, and I noticed that the numerator of the answer was the product of the two numerators. So 1 times 2 is 2, which was the answer's numerator. 2 times 3 is 6. 1 times 9 is 9. I also noticed the denominator in the answer was the product of the two denominators. So 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 4 is 12, and 2 times 10 is 20. This works every time. This pattern is the algorithm. Let's apply this algorithm on just a couple more examples. Use the algorithm that we just shared on these examples, um, on these number senti sentences, to complete them with the answer. So one-fourth of two-ninths, five-eighths of six-elevenths. Take a minute and solve the problems, and when you're ready, unpause the video. How'd you do? Do we have the same answers? Notice that my final answer might look different than yours, and remember that any time we are working with fractions, we want to write our answer in the most simplified way, which is what I've done here. All right, so before we end, we'll just write down our rule, or as we can call it now, our algorithm, one more time as a series of steps. 
Step one is to multiply your numerators. Step two is to multiply the denominators. And then step three, if it's possible, simplify your final fraction. And that's it. Remember the essential question was today was if we were able to write a rule or algorithm to multiply fractions, and I think we did. Feel free to watch this video again if needed, have your notes in class for tomorrow, and we'll have a chance to practice.